many years, the Peace and Hope Trust has been sending medical teams to remote and disadvantaged communities in Nicaragua, attending to basic health and dental care. Many villages have little or no medical attention from one year to the next. The team normally comprises a doctor, dentist, dental nurse, a couple of helpers and an interpreter. Language is an issue as the areas we visit include Spanish, Miskit and Creole, quite often spoken all at once. The team also carry boxes of medication to the outlying clinics, containing basic supplies like painkillers, wound dressings, etc. Frequently, we are very challenged by the situations we find. On one occasion, a lady came in who had been splitting logs for fuel and had a nasty cut in the palm of her hand, which needed stitches. Because of the lack of supplies, the local nurses could only clean the wound and had nothing with which to stitch it up. James, one of our volunteer dentists, came to the rescue and after anaesthetising her hand with dental anaesthetic, we stitched up the wound using our sutures. What would she have done if we hadn't been there? In another village, we were asked to take a tooth out on a pregnant lady. When asked how many months she was, we got a blank look. All she knew was that she was pregnant, she obviously had not seen a doctor or a nurse, and there would be no care for her if something went wrong. These are just some of the day-to-day -day challenges of remote living in the developing world. The January medical team works solely on the forgotten east of Nicaragua. It spent two days working in the Bluefields Clinic, followed by a couple of days at Tasbaponi, then upriver to Labara, which would be our base camp for the next week. From our base at Labara, we travelled up the Rio Grande de Matagalpa to Company Creek, which we had visited for the first time last year. Then on even further than any team had been before to Britannia, where we would spend our last working day. The nurse from Labara, Miss Layla, came with us to dispense basic medication. The children often suffer from stomach upsets from drinking dirty water and worming tablets are needed. The team spent over six hours a day in the Panga travelling to and from the villages, getting up at 4.30am in order to utilise most of the daylight, as in January it starts to get dark at 4pm. We took with us all our dental tools, tables, chairs, sterilising equipment, food and even water supplies for washing hands. Travelling conditions were very difficult this year with torrential rain and winds. In a panga, the only thing to protect us from the elements is a tarpaulin held over our heads. One evening in Labara, we were able to experience what a hurricane might be like. The whole building shook and rain started coming through the roof of the bedroom. It must be 10 times worse in one of those little shacks in the village. We did have a very productive time this year, treating over 600 patients in pain, performed 116 fillings and extracted 705 teeth. Hard work, but very rewarding. We always slept well.